This video review is just going to be a little bit of a fluff piece. In fact, here it is. Here's the fluff piece. I'll explain a little bit more in a second. I've recently been on a nice long holiday on a cruise ship all around Europe, lots of different ports and things, a couple of weeks. As a result, I wanted to take some nice photos. So I bought a new camera. I bought a Sony HX300. Here it is. The reason I got this one, it's got nice video capabilities and a really massive 50 times optical zoom, which enables me to get interesting shots like this one as I was leaving the harbour at Southampton. And look at the zoom on this. Those little chaps there, you could make out who they were, but there you can hardly even see the boat that they're in. Uh, I like things like this. I know these aren't the kind of things that photography guys get into. I, I like novelty features like this, just things that enables me to get really interesting shots when I'm sort of sat on the side of the boat uh, looking out, being able to pick things off in the distance. Like this chap in the harbour at Malta as the boat was coming in. It seems to do this every time by the looks of it. Wave a nice flag as you're coming into the harbour. Nice thing for someone to do, sort of welcoming into it. You can hardly see him now, can you, on top of that building? Anyway, it also enables you to get nice stills, of course, using that zoom. This is the moon with a handheld shot. You can see the craters on that. And of course, as with any camera, it can take decent stills. Here's a nice one in Venice. Here's one in Dubrovnik. And here's one in uh, Sicily. But, um, novelty features again I like this one you can pick out a color in this case red and uh, just show the red and make everything else black and white or in this one I've just picked out the yellow it's primary colors only uh, so I've got green in this shot the, the main thing that I find really fascinating with this camera is the HDR mode this is a shot without it and this is a shot with it. You can see it sort of pulls out all the different uh, brightness levels and puts them all into one look at the uh, paintings at the top here Look how they pop out on that. I know, again, purists won't like this, but look at this shot here. Look at all the detail that I managed to pull out with the HDR mode. Fascinating. But with any camera, it's got a bit of a downside. Video, you're going to get wind noise if you're on a boat. Just have a listen to this. Now, this time I was prepared for that situation. I brought along a micro muff. Uh, not this one, I'll show you that one in a minute. This one, it's a micro muff skinny. Uh, I'll show you how that fits to my camera. So here's the top of my camera. It's got this microphone on it here. It says stereo next to my thumb. So it's kind of an oblong shape. The Micromuff skin is designed to fit on that, but notice I've got this flash that pops up over it, which is a bit of a problem for me. I had to sort of work around that. Anyway, let's have a look inside the micro buff skinny box. So all you get really is a piece of fluff, which has a Velcro square around it, as you can see there. And the center bit doesn't have sort of Velcro in it. That's for the sound to get through. And uh, then you've got this sort of fluff on the top and that mounts to the other part here, which is that kind of scratchy side of the Velcro with a sticky back mount. And of course that's supposed to go around the microphone, but if I put that on mine, that means I wouldn't be able to open the flash up. So I had to sort of trim that down a little bit so it just fit around it a little bit more neatly, just enough to keep hold of the fluffy bit while still enabling me to get the flash up. So that's just something that I had to do on mine. You've got to see if these things fit your own camera, of course. Anyway, the fluff attached to it of course just pushes down on the velcro sticks on the top there like that and there's still just enough velcro left on the camera to hold it nice and firmly in place and now of course I've got a camera that's got a haircut a little bit like David Lynch which is interesting and I also think going in somewhere holding a camera with a haircut shows that you mean business anyway let's have a listen to how this affects the sound quality Right, so I'm at the front of the boat here. Pretty windy, really. I've got the micro muff on the camera already. Hopefully you can still hear my voice, even though it's pretty windy. Now I'm gonna remove it and we'll see what the difference is. Taking it off now. Let's have a listen to the wind noise that's coming through. The micro muff is actually doing a pretty good job of muffling that. The muffling sounds slightly, but not too much. It's much better having it on. I'll put it back on, actually. Uh, just attach it to the velcro there, give it a good brush, brush its hair a bit and see what you think of that. It's still blowing, you can feel the gust. If I had some hair it would be blowing around right now but unfortunately I can't actually demonstrate that to you but hopefully you kind of get the idea. Now I should clarify that this little piece of fluff 
can't perform miracles. Just have a listen to this clip here. You can still hear the wind noise despite the micro muff being in place on the camera. but it definitely significantly reduces it. So then I got an idea when I got back home, I thought I'd try it on my contour camera. The microphone's on the front there, that little hole, and of course that picks up loads of wind noise. So on this one, I use the original style of micro muff, which is this one here. It's a circular one rather than the square one that I used on the other camera. You can see the circular bit of Velcro there. And of course, there's a corresponding circular sticky back bit that goes on the camera, which is just the right size to put on the front of the contour camera, just around that little microphone hole there. So I had high hopes for this. I stuck that on the front there. I don't think that fluff's gonna get Get in the way of the lens and when I got it in place I had a look at this and I thought you know who that reminds me of Sam Elliott but anyway I took Sam out on the road attached him to the helmet and let's just have a listen to that So I think I've reached the limits of what the micro muffs capable of masking out. So I took the moustache off the camera, stuck it in my top pocket and went out again just to show you what the sound sounds like without the micro muff on the camera. It's really pretty much the same. There's a little bit more whistle in the clip without the micro muff on the camera, but not really worth bothering with putting one of these on an action camera, I think. They're not designed for driving at full pelt into the wind. They're more for putting on a camera like the one I showed earlier on and just cutting out a bit of background wind noise. If you want to get hold of a micro muff, there's a link to buy one in the video description. They cost about £15, which I think is about right. It's a lot easier than messing around and making one yourself out of cutting an old mink coat up or something. So for the moment, thanks for watching.